Hey, I got to ask you guys a question right from the very beginning, and and it's based on I'm an instructor for for bro- future broadcasters as well as podcasters, and one of the things that I always talk to them about is be careful with who you choose to be your partner on your podcast. And then I see you guys working very well together. What happens when one of you wants to, uh, hey, I, I'm going to go check out some football today. Ah, uh, You know, come on, Dad, we got we to gotta do that podcast. Yeah, let's do it another day. How do you guys deal with that? <laughs> uh, we don't really. We, we have a schedule, and when we, it's time to film, it's time to film. So we both sort of understand that. I don't think we've ran into – we've ran into maybe issues on the opposite end where we want to just keep going and we should probably stop (laughs) because content creation has to be creative and can't just bang it out and expect a good result. So yeah, from the podcast standpoint, we film once a week. Uh, We have a great team of editors. And so if I have him for the full day, we may get one podcast in, we may get four, but um, he's pretty much, and I'm pretty much locked in whenever we need to be. Yeah. We commit, we just commit to the, to the craft, right? So this is something that we know now is, is an obligation. Uh, We started it. Uh, it came to us we started it and we pick a day uh and for us it's every tuesday that we do the podcast and away we go you're so right about that about it it becomes a way of life and 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 a lot of people don't understand that they think okay well let's go in here and let's just bang this out we'll put one up in a month and we'll 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 see how things go and then they'll complain about it but i love the fact that you guys are committed to this because this you guys are bringing community together i feel like i'm part of your family so if you want to sign the adoption papers right now let's do it (laughs) <laughs> well, that's good to. I, I'm I'm happy you say that. And actually, uh, well, let me ask you uh, if you're feeling that way. W- what was the first encounter you had with us? Was it in the podcast form, or was it on a TikTok or something else? No, it was the podcast, and and it was with Ga- with Gavin. And I and I really want to go into how you know he made public his training protocol. And I thought, how the hell did you get that out of him? Because most people, when it uh, comes to training, you know, you, it's it's the Bruce Lee rule: don't let your enemy see your playbook. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's almost like the opposite for him because he knows he's just going to work harder than you. So he'll, he'll give you his program. <laughs> uh, he doesn't really care. Yeah, it's, it's interesting when you talk to a lot of these high-level guys. We had Bo Nicola on the week before, and he's up front with how he trains too because he knows you can't hang with him. So it's one of those – it's very basic, right, the way these guys train. It's nothing special. There's no, like, secret sauce. The secret sauce is just how hard they work. Um, so, yeah, that was a really good podcast. And then, obviously, he's one of my really good friends. So – um, he was happy to share. Well, the very fact that you you did start off with the video first, and and it was just something that kind of just hit you, and then all of a sudden you had a million followers. I mean, you must have been in shock because I mean, when when you when you go viral, you have to explain viral to other people. What what does it mean? And I mean, it's such a great feeling to be in that position. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting because when you go viral out of nowhere or, or without trying, you're now trying to keep up with what wasn't real in a sense, right? He didn't work for that. So the podcast is, I think, going to be a lot sweeter and it's going to make a lot more sense when it does grow, right? So in TikTok, for example, we went really, really high and then there's obviously going to be times where it's not as high. So you have mm-hmm. to deal with those, that roller coaster of emotions. And the podcast is, okay, we're setting and starting at ground zero. So when it does go viral or it may not even just be viral, it's just the overwhelming amount of people that want to watch us. It's going to feel, I think, a lot sweeter than this like flash in a pan viral video that happened to us out of nowhere. You you bring up the emotional side of watching those numbers. I mean, I I am a numbers cruncher. I will sit there and break it down, break it down, break it down to figure out, okay, what did I do wrong this week that I wasn't doing? Yeah. And, and I mean, d- does it get into your soul that way too? And how do you move beyond that mountain? Oh yeah, I think it's just going through it. Like the highs get really high in the beginning, and then the lows get really low, and you yeah. try to analyze and pick apart okay this is what the intro has to be and this is how the ending has to be i think at the end of the day what we realize is like as long as you stay authentic and you try to have as much fun as possible really never forget your roots and why you went viral in the first place and same thing with you right if you and i i know people that are more analytic than anything and they'll go back and say okay i'm gonna do exactly what i just did for this post or this podcast and the results aren't there you're fighting a, a battle that you really can't win because you can't control these algorithms. Mm-hmm. But what you can do is just, again, create what you know is really great content and focus more on the input and less on the outcome. Right. I mean, Arrow, there's the, there's such a thing called paralysis by analysis, right? <laughs> um, when you get too deep, that's not good. Um, you know, he's very different than I am. I, I watch the videos and I see things that 
I always find entertaining, but I also see things that I would rather do differently next time. The views are a byproduct of that. Yeah. Even on our best videos, I, I go back and I look at the, the first video that went viral and to your point, well, what's viral? I didn't know what viral was, but I soon found out when he explained and said, dad, we gotta do it again because we've got over 8 million views of the first cocktail that I made that I smoked in Manhattan. But I look back at that video and I'm like, man, that was terrible. Like the, the mistakes, the things that I, yep. I did, I don't even know why I did them. But again, I did them authentically because I was making a drink for myself. I wasn't out there trying to do it differently for, for an audience. So today, um, his focus is one thing, mine's another. Um, I, don't, I don't get in the weeds of the views. The views to me are, are, are not driving truly what our commitment now is. Our commitment is this, having our routine, our discipline. Um, and to your point of a guy like anyone who's a, a Gavin who's going to work out, you go to the gym, you show up, you do the same things over and over again, repetition, time over yep. task. Yep. And, and the, before you know it, you're competing and you're one of the strongest. I'm glad that you brought up that you go back and watch yourself. And the reason why is because I'm a radio guy. We air check ourselves. That's how we become better and better and better. And so a lot of people don't understand that it's, it has nothing to do with conceit or overconfidence, that we are studying to make the product better. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to our podcast this morning, you know, the one that we, which is you and I talking about technology. And I'm listening to it. I'm like, gosh, it's hard. It's so hard sometimes to listen to yourself talk, yep. let alone watch. Yep, yep. And I think listening for me is harder than even watching um, because the distraction of watching is that, is the visual. But the listening part, I'm so critical of the breath that I would take, the pause <laughs> that you'll make. That, and you know this, right? Things that you understand that I'm only learning, I'm just learning, but I'm already picking up real quick on. Uh, and so it's hard. It's it's a uh, it, that in itself is something you got to be careful with. Don't again overanalyze um, what you're doing. Just be committed to showing up and doing it. I, I you know if if you could sit, uh, see me here in the studio, I sit here with a writing instrument in my hand and I'm jotting down notes as we go. And it be and and you know and and that's the reason why you can't see me on the camera because I I'm everywhere in this room. I mean I am no different yeah. than 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 Jim Kramer who can't sit still. How did you get him to sit yeah. still behind a microphone? Did it. <laughs> Well, we were giving him some uh, mezcal, so he was kind of comfortable maybe that way. <laughs> but I mean, I, I was actually going to compliment you and the other guys we were on today. You guys really do have radio voice. Like you just sound, yeah, again, we have to always be improving and, and we're taking mental notes about how you're approaching this little interview too. Yeah. This is no little interview. Wow, it's a big interview, right, Arrow? This is a big one for it, you. It's a big one. It's a big one. But, you know, you talk about the people that, that you uh, have been with and things, and you also talked about the numbers and the disappointment sometime when, when they don't come in when you have a big uh, uh, um, interview. That's one of the reasons why I made it a point. I will never try to get an interview with Paul McCartney because I feel like that there will be so much anxiety in show <laughs> prepping that it will the payoff will not be on the other side. And so, therefore, I've had to convince myself, and I'm sure you guys are the same thing, it's the experience of creating the podcast and going through the conversation there there's nothing greater than that do you agree yeah oh, yeah well once you fall in love with that process yeah and then that's it, it's so interesting that you say that because i've always thought okay hypothetically if we can get name some sort of ideal guest that i wanted on right now would we even want it i don't know i don't know if we're ready mentally and we haven't prepared we've only been doing this for two months so it would probably be more beneficial if it happened in a year from now. So we're kind of just trusting the process and yeah, enjoying the day by day stuff. Balancing alcohol with a healthy lifestyle. You guys get really real being, you know, just right. You're not afraid to talk about things. Correct. Well, you have to listen. If you're going to be authentic, you got to be authentic all the way. Yep. Um, you know, there, there are certain things that are private that we're not going to talk about because we don't need to go there, but you know, we stay in the space that's relevant and I think connects with our audience. And, and that's another part of the evolution of this, trying to find out what our audience wants to know or, or needs to know and, and how we can better convey that message and be responsible with it. There's a huge undercurrent and a movement, I think, especially of the younger generation that wants to, you know, enhance that there's a soundbite, you know, being your better self. Mm -hmm. And 
And there's a lot of that right now. Oh, be your better self, a better version of yourself. Okay, I understand what that means, but to truly embrace that is somewhat painful at times because you you need to look at yourself and, and know what your faults are and say, okay, don't, but don't stay there. Like go forward, evolve, try things out um, and, and have fun with it. And some things, most of the things will work out. Over time, everything works out, right? Over time, the, the, the day starts the next day. It's a clean slate. You can do it over. You can do it differently. You can do it better. <laughs> so. I would love to see the research on the listeners that tap in because they wish they had the same kind of relationship with their father. And that listening to you guys is that it, it, it makes me feel like that because I, I, I did not get to talk with my father. And, and so to have conversations like that, I was always the knucklehead or he would accuse me of being the know-it-all. You know, I mean, to, for you guys to have the conversations right. that you right. do is a beautiful picture. And to hear it in a podcast is great for the imagination. Thank you. Well, it's it's to his credit, to be honest with you, because if we didn't have this venue, our relationship would, would be probably, you know, like the most commonplace. I mean, let's be realistic. I sit down all day on a Tuesday and I talk with or listen to him and the other people talk. That venue was created because of him this was his vision i i have a full-time job i still have a full-time job so you know put your head down and pedal work and go provide for your family uh this is the dad's role this is what i signed up for and yeah while you'd love to stop all of that and and ask each one of your kids to go to lunch or to go to dinner and have a conversation it's not realistic it's not like you don't want to do that as a parent it's just the opportunity isn't always there. Mm -hmm. We have this opportunity. I have the the gift to work with my daughter, who's our social media manager. Yeah. I have the you know the now the 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 place to have my my wife involved and have my my other son and my other daughter involved. And so this is what has come our way, and we're we're having as much fun as you can have, but it's work and it's challenging. And there's that day to day is not always fun. The day-to-day gets tedious. <laughs> I want to touch on something when you were talking about developing the voice. Um, first of all, the um, to go from terrestrial radio to podcasting, that was one of the biggest struggles because getting a podcast voice versus a radio voice, completely different. But I think that what you need to do is listen to those the, the jocks that are on the air today and other podcasts, impersonate them. But then in, in, in because there's Casey Kasem was huge in my life. Therefore, that's the storyteller. And, and you learn to figure out who is it that you want to be and then and you know and, and and it really is a gift to those that you're listening to that you that you would sound like them but you guys have got incredible voices because you are in an age where it's all about being natural it's not about gr- grinding your vocals and but talking like a big time jock it, yeah bah, you know it's those things those days are yeah, over i, I so. want to be like i want to be like wolfman jack oh my god wolfman jack oh baby you got the wolf okay. daddy here <laughs> 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 can you imagine what he was gargling with at night when that show was over oh my gosh <laughs> oh my and he and i don't even know do you know who casey Kasem is yeah. all right he heard Casey, but wolfman jack that guy grew up was like that was the guy yeah that was the guy yeah so anyway oh his yeah. autograph is right behind me and and because he would always come to town because oh, cool. he was always trying to be with the people and he well he was lived in north carolina as well so but it, but but see but you oh, guys are so real and and that's what is it makes me inspired by listening to you so i i i hear how you have a conversation i'm inspired i will try to converse just like you guys do Cool. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Errol. Good stuff. All right. How much more time do we have? I mean, we could talk forever here. Oh, we got three days. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 talk about um you know the the wine because when you when you guys put the, the subject on the on the wine um i i thought right away i'm going oh wow i always thought wine was for girls but but you you don't you don't really make it make you know make that true you make it for everybody sure it's a culture thing though it's just where we're from and i guess being of italian descent it's in our family mm-hmm. so it's interesting that you even said that because yeah, we've never people in New Jersey have never maybe it's just the East Coast or Northeast have never seen wine. It's just a girl thing, and and it's probably the opposite here. Like more dudes are into red wine than 
the girls that I know for sure. Yeah, because I've always thought well, when I see the the guys buying the wine, I'm going, oh, it's a Friday night. Okay, I understand what's happening here. The, you're going to use the wine to soften up the scene, and and so, but I but but at the same time, right. I see I see a lot of guys buying those big old twelve packs of beer too. Yeah, no, that, that's interesting. Yeah, again, around here, people guys will buy wine to go out with other guys. It's very very normal. Yeah, and we celebrate that. Uh, I have a group of friends that elevates the game when you talk about wine i mean you can just you can run the gamut you can get a good you know 20 dollar bottle of cabernet uh and then a you know up, upscale it to uh 250 uh bottle of french wine so there, there's there's that whole other what we call life experience right that that has the common thread which is wine and especially with the guys that I uh, socialize with, um, it, it is in itself a reason to get together. Everyone bring a bottle of wine, let's try it. Everyone, you know, uh, pull from a different region uh, and, and let's try those wines together and let's have some fun and rank them. And, and so, um, and I hear a lot of people, you know, doing the same thing with like scotch yes, and whiskeys yes, and bourbons. Yep, yep. And, and again, it, let's face it, that's, to me, that's the best way to celebrate friendships as well as the, in this case, the spirit that you're you're hosting. Online gambling is, is it's up in the, uh, they're, they're trying to decide if we can legally do it here in North Carolina. So the fact that you guys were talking about it shows how in touch you are with your audience. Yeah. Who did this research for you? Did you do this on your own? Dude, you have you to see, you, I, 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 I am a research freak, man. I did, but I, oh, I, I show no, prep man. two and three days out of each, each conversation. That's amazing, man. And that, like something like that, for example, it impresses us so much that now I have to make sure, and we just hired like a pre-producer for our guests, but we got to make sure we come correct and have these sort of loaded questions and information. But yeah, I mean, that that was a really interesting topic um, of conversation with Bill Prasperell. I never realized that he was the one that brought New Jersey online gambling to the surface and is, is pretty active in making sure that it's followed up by the rest of the states. Um, and it's one of those things that when you have it in New Jersey, it just makes sense. And then when you go to other states that don't, it's almost like uh, you confuse as to why they're not adopting the same thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. I mean, guys, I Absolutely. love talking with you. And, and you know, what a better way to promote, promote, promote than to talk with other other podcasters who have their listening audience that becomes your listening audience. And, and it's a community is what it is. Yeah, Absolutely. and it should be. That should be, and I'm glad that we did this and that iHeart obviously set it up for this purpose. Um, but we experienced that when we went out to um, South by Southwest Conference oh, man. and iHeart had hosted, and I got to meet Holly Fry, right? You got to meet Holly. She was great. And there was, you know, you wanted more of that. You know, Matt Frederick and their show. I mean, there was just, I wanted to get more of that and closer yep. to that. And so, you know, that's how you do learn, but you also are going to pull from the experiences and the exchange and, and it's healthy for everyone yep once in a while to know that you didn't bring your best and even though you think it came through as being less than good no it didn't come through that way so you're all right just get back up and do it again yeah, right so it. you're not gonna yeah so so today is a a great example of that for us we we've now ran through here uh, six different interviews mm-hmm. and each one of them's different but the more we're doing, right, the more we're flowing, the more we're That's engaged. So well, we, we could go another hour here and, and <laughs> I think then find that, wow, we, we really did well. Yeah. So, wow. Well, you guys be brilliant today, okay? Yeah, me too, buddy. Thanks for having us. All right, cool. Good stuff.